So I titled this Playing Nice with Other Humanoids today, and I'd like to get a show of hands. How many of you have no conflict at work? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Well, what my objective is today is to give you a few tools, just some fun things to keep in mind, keep it really simple that you can take back to work and hopefully navigate the channels a little bit. So the first thing is to define conflict. And everybody, I think, has a little bit def different definition. What do you all define as conflict? When things don't go my way, it's Ah, I've heard that one before. This gentleman said, when things don't go my way, it's conflict. What else? What do you find that creates conflict? Or what's the definition in your workplace? I worked in a law firm back in Chicago and uh, in another life, and I worked in the litigation department, so conflict had a, a definition there. There were opposing parties. What do you have? Yes, sir. Very good. Difficulty between employees, different issues. I'd like to throw something out for consideration. What about a disparity in perceived goals? Yeah, I get a lot of, of nodding. And I'll give you an example. Um, my husband and I row crew, and if you don't know what that is, you, you can uh, look on some of the movies where you see Harvard and Oxford competing with stroke, stroke, stroke. So last year, my husband said, um, I found this boat that I want to buy. Now, an investment in a single racing skull is, is pretty significant. And I said, well, what do you want to do with this? Well, I think I'd like to row the Pike Island race. To which my response was, are you high? That's 13 miles. <clears throat> I want to get out on the river in the morning, and I, I will row a little bit. And we're on the St. Croix, and I stop, and I look at the eagles up in the trees. And then I row a little bit more, and I look at the sun coming up. And then I row a little bit more, and I see the osprey nest. And he's like, well, <laughs> you're so far behind. So we had a differing, uh, two different goals here. I wanted it just to paddle around. He wanted His objective was a race. Well, we ended up getting the boat, and he's not going to row Pike Island this year. <laughs> so what you need to look at in some of your cases, what are the goals? What are some of the things, whether it's company, whether it's employee, what are some of the goals that, that are in conflict there? Okay, so three types of conflict that I want to present that are consideration in your workplace. So conflict over data. If I say first thing in the morning to any of you, what time is that on the clock? Give me some feedback. Six, Six eight? Five. <laughs> Did you say five? Dude. Oh, oh, by noon. There you go. Yeah, some people it's 5.30. Some people it's 8 o'clock. Some people it's by noon. If you're on a graveyard shift, what is first thing in the morning? Could be 11 o'clock at night. So one of the things that you might have are, is a conflict over perceived data. Now, you go into at the beginning of the year. If you're a benefits year, might be September, might be January, might be July 1st. Same thing with a fiscal year. Or it might be a calendar year, January 1st. So you, those are the types of data to consider in your conflict. What are data conflicts that you have in your workplace? What do you see? Yes, ma'am. Hours worked. Hours worked. Yes, yes. And I'm actually working with a group now. They have fairly casual as a, a, an employment group. I thought that's interesting. Um, casual, part-time, fairly part-time, and full-time. Throw a dart. Yeah, hours worked. What else? What are, what are some of the other data areas you might have conflict over? PTO. PTO. Yeah. Does it make sense about the conflict over data? Okay. Next one is purpose. Why are you here? Or why are you doing what you're doing? So years ago, I did some training for Northwest Airlines. Um, and we had what we would do. We did conflict resolution, which 
I always kind of joke and say, apparently it didn't work very well with these guys. So we had all the people in the room, and we had ground operations, and we had technical operations. And I would say, all right, why are you here? Why are you employed with the airline? Ground ops said, well, on time. Happy customers. Tech ops said, um, customers that arrive alive and safety. So back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the why are you here? And one guy stood up one time and he said, let me just throw this one out. I think I might have it. Strap their butt to a seat, hope they get there alive, hope the bags follow. Everybody said, yeah, that works for me. My husband works in the healthcare industry. He says a lot of times what he runs into um, in the nursing practice, I'm here to take care of patients. He works with nurse managers a lot in teaching um, doctors and nurses how to administer chemo. Then you get nurse managers, I'm here to make sure operations run smoothly. So you get conflict there. He said, if you want to walk into an office where the nurses are saying, wait a minute, I have a patient to take care of, and the nurse manager is saying, wait a minute, you got to get this done now. We've got two more coming in. You've got conflict going on. So the last one is values. Where do you get your values? Where do you get your values if you are a baby boomer? Where did they come from? Came from, say again? The 50s. Came from the 50s? Parents. Parents. Perception. Perception. Parents. Where else? Lifestyle. Lifestyle. How, say it again. TV. <laughs> okay, I've hit the nail on the head. So scroll back a little bit. How many of you, from your parents, from your teachers, from your church, um, from your community, if you grew up regionally here as opposed to I'm from Chicago, I'm going to have a little bit different view, a different perspective, some of those things. Then you get into this generation and TV. Now, when I was growing up, Ricky and Lucy couldn't sleep in the same bed and couldn't say the word pregnant on TV. Now, I know you all are going to play golf today, but have you seen Days of Our Lives lately at noon? A little bit different than Ricky and Lucy. Look at the stuff that's on HBO. Look at the stuff that's on, what do you watch? Well, I had to laugh. Pete was talking about The Godfather. Um, my husband's from Jersey, so that, that's a staple in our house. We watch it about once a week. Um, the Godfather, yeah. And then we have a critique on whether one is better than two and three is no good. In The Godfather, there's a lot of stuff that takes place, but you don't hear a lot of swearing. You don't see a lot of nudity. Um, even the killing, the violence, is sort of um, downplayed, uh, with the exception of a few scenes. Now, if you turn on some of the things in the movies or even on HBO, um, there are some things that I, I know I, my brother was... Uh, we were all together with my brother the other day, and something, whatever we were watching, came on. I went, oh, ugh, and I pulled the cover over my head um, on the couch. Um, different perspective. Your values of what's acceptable, especially in conflict, come from a lot of different areas. So what are the things that you see as values conflicts in the workplace? Work ethic. Work ethic. And believe me, there's a lot of complaint from baby boomers about the work ethic of the millennials these days. And from Gen Xers about the millennials. Yeah. We all complain about the millennials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as a, a, a former professor, I will tell you that there are a lot of amazing millennials out there. Um, you get the, the baby boomers who are slackers just like you do the millennials. It's all over, all over the generations. What do you see? Conflict in work values. Work ethic, what else? Culturally different from the work environment. A little bit louder. Cultural differences. Cultural differences, yes, very much. And they are, they are coming to the forefront a lot lately. Expectations of money versus uh, lifestyle. Yeah, money versus lifestyle. 
There are a lot of things that come up in conflict that we talk about with regard to integrity and honesty. Those are things that pop up. Um, Rick was talking about documentation, Pete talking about litigation with employees. Those are things that if you can look into and see as a conflict I can manage now, um, chances are it'll be less of a uh, documentation later. Questions, comments? Okay, let's see here. So when you've got a conflict come up, what do you deal with first, the emotions or the issue? What do you think? How many people think the emotions first? How many people think the issue first? How many people are awake? <laughs> okay, people that said emotions, why would you deal with the emotions first? A little bit louder. Perfect, you de-escalate the emotions. You identify them, get them listed, move on. Yes, sir? I always used to deal with the issues first and talk about what the person said. So you really ought to deal with the emotions first and confuse it before you start to deal with the issues. Well said, well said. And it is a preference, there's no rule. But if you do deal with the emotions first, it tends to de-escalate it. And there are a lot of things you can do. I've had work groups where we've done um, exercises and I've given them <coughs> excuse me, flip chart and said, list all of the emotions, all of the emotions that you feel in your conflict. So here's where you get to list them. Tell me some of the emotions that take place during conflict. There's the obvious anger. What else? Disappointment. Disappointment. Resentment. Say it again. Resentment, fear, fear. Stress. stress. What else, you guys? Frustration, Frustration absolutely. Jealousy. Jealousy, is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Frightened. Frightened. Pride. 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 Ah, what about the emotions of um, happy, pride, relief. relief. Do you get people for whom conflict is exciting? <laughs> Did you just point to Adam? Yeah. <laughs> well, I said I worked in a law firm in another life back at home in Chicago, and we had a couple of litigators that just they just loved that. The conflict was just really what melted their butter. <clears throat> so you do have those emotions. But go through and look and see if you're working with employees or even a single employee, have a, a conversation and say, tell me how you feel. If it's just between you and another person, tell me how you feel. I've done it with my family. I've done it with employees. I've done it. I've got a coaching client now. I have to sit down and say, you know, tell me how you feel so I can help you resolve this with your coworker. So go through and process the emotions, even if it's just a list. Let them list it all out. What about the men that don't talk about feelings? Ooh, good question. Gentlemen, his question was, what about men who don't talk about their feelings? I'm going to throw that one back out into the crowd. Gentlemen, what would you do? That's a good one. I think they still handle it intellectually. Even though they, they don't have emotional feelings. So how do you handle it? Yeah, did you hear him? You can still handle it intellectually. Tell how you feel. Still handle it intellectually. Tell how you feel. One of the things that Rick talked to you about was preparation and documentation. So if you are someone, and it happens to women too, that are not expressive emotionally, plan and prepare for a meeting with the conflict issue. And sit down and identify some of your emotions. Go through and so get those, those feeling words. Um, I know that that's not the typical um, pathway for a lot of men. Um, but don't stereotype. If you're somebody who struggles with identifying it, flip open Google the word emotions and see what comes up. 
but do go ahead and plan for I'd like to tell you how I feel or ask them how they feel and look at what those, those uh, emotions are identified as. That's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that. I got a guy at home that will tell you night and day. Uh, well, here's what I think. Okay, anything else about emotions? Okay. Come on. There we go. Okay, the issue. If you are going to have a discussion about the issue, keep it like a newspaper headline. Five words or less. So who's got a conflict at work or at home or with family that you can bring it down to five words or less? That's a tough one, isn't it? Five words or less. I can see, are you counting with your words? I was just at home in Illinois. I'm helping um, an elderly uncle um, transition from his house into a uh, nursing home. And um, there's a lot of drama around the kids. So driving home, my husband said, okay, you gotta practice this. How would you drill this down to five words or less? Um, crazy cousins won't go away is not what, what was uh, well processed. We can't get staff reports done because we need them by 8 o'clock every morning to make sure that we're all ready and we're briefed for the 9 o'clock staff meeting. Second E is your expectation. I expect that the behavior will change and you will be sitting at your computer, punched in, ready to go, computer up and running by 8 o'clock. Not having coffee, not putting on lipstick, not pulling in your parking place. Computer on, ready to go, 8 o'clock. Your R is results. It can be a positive result that you convey. It can be a negative result. I don't like the word negative, but I can't think of any other way to... So if you are punched in, ready to go, we've got those staff reports ready to be copied so everybody's briefed, we're not going to have a conversation about this anymore. You're, you're on board. If not, we may be talking about disciplinary action or the condition of your employment here. Does that make sense? And it's a fun acronym because everybody always says, oh, think about beer. But it is. It's behavior, effect, expectation, and the result. So a lot of times to kind of help with, you know, you're being accused or someone's kind of coming at you, remember if you're going to come back and say, I've noticed that you seem really upset. I noticed that this has really kind of set you off. Look at the behavior. So I noticed that that you're very upset about this. I noticed, um, you know, some people language will become a problem. I noticed that the language has become a little bit of um, a change here. You know, um, that as an effect is sort of putting me in a place where I'm uncomfortable. What I would expect from the two of us is that we're going to sit down and go through and identify exactly what we need to do and start planning things. Then we're going to be fine. We'll move on. We'll find a way to work through this. We'll calendar a date to come back around, make sure that the conflict's being resolved and move forward. That help? That might help. OK. Short and sweet. Questions? I have a lot of information. Um, like I said, I spent about three years doing conflict resolution training for the Northwest Airlines people. So if you need more information, please email me. Tell me where we met um, and ask. And I've, I'm happy to send along any information to help you with this. I wanted to make sure I gave you a short and sweet today with a few fun things to take away. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be hanging around afterwards, too.